Welcome back to another episode of the Modernist Guide. This is once again a film review. This time, Prisoners of Ghostland, starring Nicolas Cage, directed by Shion Sono, who is kind of a cult, horror, gonzo Japanese director. He's kind of part of this notorious group of directors over there. Very Quentin Tarantino as just to kind of give him a foot in the door of who to look at in comparison on the American side, though he's a little bit more surreal and out there than Quentin's ever really dared to go, along with Takeshi Miike, Yoshihiro Shishimura, and Minoru Kawasaki. They are just the contemporary group right now of directors who have a lot of splatter to it, but also just outlandish artistic integrity. You can call them auteurs, you can call them cult directors, but I would say both in quality and temperament, though I'm not super versed in how they are as people. Shion and Mike seem to have the better grasp on films looking good while they do their crazy wackadoo nonsense and have blood just going all over the place at the same time while still feeling like it's not some gory 80s B-horror film that looks like it's on a shoestring budget. Very recently for Shion, he has decided to start doing more American-esque films and backed by American companies. He's done two with Amazon and one with Netflix, and now this one, Prisoners of Ghostland is supposedly is more of a theatrical film debut, though because of COVID and other things, it's very limited release. But with Nicolas Cage's star power, it's still got enough, I think, recognizability and notoriety. It came out back in September, and I've been wanting to get around for a while because I'm actually a big fan of Shion and Mikay's. I've watched most of their films. I haven't really watched the other guys. There's theirs is a little bit more lower production and sometimes it just gets annoying and it's too gory and horror-esque while these guys while still being bloody have a little bit more to offer i think shion specifically has two of my favorite kind of crazy silly films why don't you go play in hell and then tokyo tribe which is a gangster rap musical i'm not kidding <laughs> but the underlying theme here for Sono's work more than anything is outlandish costumes, lots of bright colors, lots of blood and violence, while still trying to decide what to do with yourself, kind of. It's, you know, artistic, poetic artourism of not asking super big, serious questions as much as just trying to enjoy the insanity while also still trying to figure out what you're doing. And it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. It's it's the literal question, like, why are we here? What is the point of all this? But this one is a lot slower pace than I was expecting. Nicholas Cage is rigged up to a suit that will blow up his arms and balls if he doesn't get the governor of this town very post-apocalyptic and nonsensical with just cowboys and samurais just all over the place but he has to go get the governor's granddaughter who is played by sofia botella who i really like she likes doing stylistic gonzo-esque films like this she was the only good part in the mummy reboot she was in star trek beyond as an alien hotel artemis atomic blonde so she likes the stylization of stuff but unlike previous films of shion's that i've seen this one is so much slower paced, and that's okay, I guess. I really wasn't expecting it, so when I realized it was him, I was expecting more, and it just kept taking forever, so I'm a little biased on how much, I guess, hype I was putting in my head not meaning to, because I didn't expect him to change this much, but I think he really wanted to take a more Jodorowsky approach. Everything's slower, a lot of people say or do nonsensical things that feel off kilter or not really part of whatever linear story there is they're very non-linear segments because that we constantly get cutaways to somewhere else that had nothing to do with what we were doing before but it's still of characters that were introduced early on so it's not super like randomized as much as like now we're gonna look at them and you know very snippet or skit-esque sometimes we cut to them waking up so that means the scene just before was actually a dream nothing's ever really explained how or why anything works 
everything feels super metaphorical or illusionary or suggestive. And that's all well and dandy and still enjoyable with all the colors and nonsense. But I'm not sure the point of the resolution except just finding your place. That is the only like straightforward narrative thing I could think of or find as I watched it. However, though, I have a personal bias that even though this wasn't the kind of storytelling pace I enjoyed is still the visual spectacle of Xion. It just didn't move as fast. There wasn't as much conflict as much as, oh, we're going to do this now. And some of the people fighting for whatever reason or decide not to fight didn't fully make sense to me. I think as far as the title goes, it's really about dealing with your past and trying to create a brighter future. There's weird lines about just fighting against time and how to change your future and stuff like that. So it's all big metaphorical uh, gushing whatever. But even though it wasn't what I expected or kind of even wanted, I would still actually recommend this because I believe that film should be pushed to its limits visually. And sometimes we don't get that, especially in highly praised films. People always want to talk about how realistic things are and just the way they're shot. People care more about camera shots and choreography and editing more than anything sometimes. And that kind of gets annoying when it's still just something super, super plausible, realistic, almost like you're filming real people, you know, like it's a documentary, you know, anything from Marriage Story or Roma, Belfast, you know, just the Earth's. You know, just current contemporary stuff, and I think those are all on Netflix. Not to shill Netflix. <laughs> but sometimes I don't want to watch people be people. I want to watch actors go fucking crazy. And that's what this is, even though it was much slower pace than I was wanting. I believe in the hypervisual medium that is filmmaking, so anything like this I think is worth a shot just to see... All the weird things it does, even though, you know, Jodorowsky kind of tops it. So you can just watch that and just go, yeah, seen it. <laughs> but it was all right. It was silly. I liked it a lot at the very beginning. Uh, then I realized, oh, we're not doing a lot, are we? <laughs> About 60% in or so. But yeah, I'm going to give this like a 5.75 out of 10 just because I don't want to hate it and I don't want to dislike it. But I also don't know what any of its strengths are besides visually. Nicolas Cage gets to be among friends, basically, as the kind of acting style that got him ridiculed in the 90s and 2000s is just a walk in the park like everyone else kind of situation. So that's cool for him, especially with the last bunch of films he's done. And I still think the hyper-realization and the gonzo-ness of it and the ridiculousness of everything is worth the experience. So that's pretty much it. Thanks again. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, if not, thank you for watching.